Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yes, Have Some. Super excited about our roundtable tonight. This is going to be fun. I think I'm calling it now best episode we've ever done. I always predict <laughs> at the beginning, uh, but hopefully uh, you guys are as excited as I am. Obviously, Jake and Abigail are with me, and we've got three, I'm going to say three of the most important people in the world because these are names <laughs> that are becoming very familiar you know in the ghostbusters world we, we've had the same names forever it's fun to have new people to talk to i mean how many times can you talk to you know randy cook and dan Aykroyd? not that i've talked to either of them but i'm <laughs> about our guest tonight um i'm gonna go ahead and introduce everybody and then we'll we'll, we'll dig into who they are and why they're here uh first off uh author of the brand new Making of Ghostbusters, the incredible art book, uh, Ozzy and Guanzo. Ozzy, thank you for joining us. Thanks, you guys. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You kind of set all this up. We, we kind of talked and you said, can I bring some friends? And I said, let's make it a party. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, Francois and, and Bryn and I were like, were we the first one of the first people on this movie when it started, Francois? I think so. I, I uh, I'm thinking back. I mean, I think you were employee number two, Ozzy, and then yeah, Bryn, you're probably <laughs> and then Bryn three came or four like, like that week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. It was, it was funny because you know the production designers are generally like the first people to be hired, sometimes before the line producer. In this case, it was right after the line producer, and so we came in and didn't. We were just literally all walking into empty offices together at Sony. And looking for a place to plug in our computers and things, you know, it's it's uh, it's a, it's kind of a, a neat feeling to be to walk in and and there's nothing, there's nothing on the walls, right? There's and what is I mean, we're, I want to get to the individual introductions, but this is a really great point. We're now at this point where it's almost three years later. The movie's finally out. It's about to be on DVD. Everybody's seeing it. Is it surreal to think back about those first days when you're, you're looking for the plug at Sony and that there's nothing <laughs> and now there's this fully formed creation that is out there? And obviously, congratulations, because the movie is just as fans, as lifelong fans, it's everything we could have ever hoped for. And it, it's so wonderful and so beautiful. And there's so much to, to analyze. So just congrats and thank you. But thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Bryn, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, we're getting to know your work uh, in the art book, all of these amazing uh, pieces of art, and this character design and creature design and, and concept art. Uh, is this, have you ever done anything like this? Have you ever been part of something like Ghostbusters? Um, well, you know, Ghostbusters was a really special project because um, I was given a lot on this project. I've, I've been in film for a while now and animation and kind of just the entertainment industry as a whole. But um, what was so special about Ghostbusters in particular was uh, Francois and Jason really trusted me with a lot. <laughs> and so um, it was probably one of my most involved projects to date um, and certainly one of my most favorite projects I've ever gotten to work on. So Awesome. Very yeah. cool. And then uh, Francois, you, you have this incredible career. Um, how did you get, uh, you know, how'd you get your eyes on this project? Did you, did you have any kind of prior relationship, uh, with, with Jason and how, you know, when, when did you first hear about it and how did you get involved? So it, it's kind of a funny story. I got, um, I got a message to that, that Jason wanted to just uh, chat with me uh, and there was no context and he just wanted to meet me and have a chat. And so I, uh, I went to Sony to his offices and I didn't know where, you know, I just had the building number. It was like David Lean B building uh, suite 100 or something. And it was the Ghostbusters office. It's got the big Ghostbusters mm -hmm. sign on it. It's Ghost Corps. And I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. I wonder why he was, <laughs> wants to meet at Ghost Corps. And so uh, I, I sat down and he, uh, he was like, uh, look, I've been, my, my sound, uh, my sound guy on set, worked on Ford versus Ferrari and had all these amazing things to say about the set and the movie hadn't come out yet, but he said the sets were just incredible. And I thought, uh, I I'd love to talk to you about designing Ghostbusters. And would you mind reading the script? And he gave me this, he said, no one's read it. Can, <laughs> if you want, if you want, you can go read it right now and let me know what you think. And so I literally went and read the script uh, in the boardroom and I thought it was 
a fantastic concept with great characters. And I think I, I kind of said, I'm in, I'm in. And he's like, well, think about it, you know, talk, talk to, think. I'm like, no, no, I'm in, I'm, this is great. This is great. Let's do it. This, is, this sounds fantastic. So that's how uh, I basically met with him. We hit it off and I said, yes, right away. Uh, like within 15 minutes of chatting with him, I, he just had such a, he was so passionate about the material. And this was really, I mean, something that he had, yeah, he couldn't have been more enthusiastic. And so yeah, that, the, yeah he had me at hello, basically. Um, just to kind of give context uh, for time frame, the the movie was officially announced to the public in January of 2019. So, how long before that is this, or is this? Right I think I met time? him in December, right before the announcement. He had okay. just finished editing, shooting and editing the teaser, mm-hmm. which he showed me on his computer during the <laughs> meeting. And I think the teaser came out in January. Yeah. Like right when we started, I think we started in January. Right when we correctly. Started. Yeah. yeah. Right when we started. So it all happened very, very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And at that point, like, I don't think the studio, I think maybe like one person at the studio had read the script. So it was pretty, it was pretty fresh. And I, and it was on nobody's, it was on, I mean, we didn't know there was going to be another Ghostbusters movie. No one knew. It was kind of a big surprise, even to me uh, coming into the room. Yeah. I mean, we're not mm-hmm. industry. Uh, in the way that you all are. Uh, but we, I would say uh, we have our fingers on the pulse of Ghostbusters and it was definitely um, a surprise to us. The only, the only clue leading up to it was, what was it? Dan Aykroyd was on uh, Dan Rather. Yeah. In, like like November of, ah. of 2018 and said that they were, there was a, uh, a team oh, of right, right. Uh, filmmakers working on a, on a script. And then we were all just debating for months. Who is this team? <laughs> How many times has he said this? Is it true? Exactly. <laughs> right. Except for it's Dan Aykroyd, so yeah. he's been saying that for 30 years. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Um, so, and, yeah. and Ozzy, to talk a little bit about, you know, your involvement with the project. Uh, you, you said, you you know, you were there very early days, employee number two. Uh, how does that, uh, you know, how does that come on your radar? And what I, is... It, it was, yeah. it was just, you know... I had never worked with Jason before and um, but I have worked with Francois quite a bit um, and uh, on the James Mangold movies on, on Logan and on the Wolverine and we did Ford vs. Ferrari. And so I, friend, you know, we, we go ba- way back and we're good friends and Francois, I think, called me and said, hey, they're doing a Ghostbusters movie. I'm like, well, what kind of Ghostbusters movie? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I and, asked. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, I came on, on board, you know, really, really early when we were just starting the kind of world building, pro- uh, you know, process and the visual development process. And, um, and it came together really, really, really fast. Right, Francois? Because I feel like in within... Yeah. Three months, maybe, or less, you were already in Calgary. Yeah, it was a very, I mean, they... they super fast for a movie it was like super. This. It was super fast. I don't remember exactly how many weeks we had, but it was, it was like they loved the script. The studio loved the script, and we had, they gave us, you know, sort of like a, an immediate, almost green light to go and just go as quickly as possible. So uh, Jason had actually, when I met him, he had gone and done a kind of a pre-scout of Calgary and a couple other places in North America. And um, I I got like immediately, I got on the plane to go check out Calgary because I had never been there before. And um, it was really cold (laughs) because I I think I went to go scout in January or February, something like that, January, February, it was freezing. Uh, But it, but, you know, after doing some research, I, I got really excited about, about the idea of going there because of the, you know, the opportunity to shoot, like shoot landscapes and these big open plains and so, you know some of these um, iconic locations that had been in like Richard Donner's Superman movie or, or or like Days of Heaven and Badlands and you know those 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 iconic sort of beautiful vistas of the the corn and barley and mountains and all of that. So um, yeah, and Francois, happened. remember when we started? There was we we had those offices right above. There were offices right above Ghost Corps and you would look out the window and the Ecto-1 yeah. was there yeah. and our walls were completely empty uh, and we just started kind of pulling visuals and, you know, and kind of figuring out 
this mining town and kind of the story behind it, you know, and vi the visual elements that would yeah. be part of that, the Shandor story, you know, and what that would kind of look like. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think, I, I, I think a lot of folks who, uh, who just watch movies, they think that like a, a production designer just sits down and draws all the sets and then they just build them. But the reality is much more tedious, <laughs> but, but also much more interesting than that because Ozzy is exactly right. You know, it, like it's literally and um, metaphorically blank walls, right? When you, you have a script and sometimes you don't have a script. In this case, we had a, a pretty good script, but the script doesn't go into too much description. It, although if, if, if everything was described, the screenplay would be a thousand pages long, right? So you sometimes you have just a few sentences that describe a location. So uh, my job as a production designer is to start a, whole, a, a bunch of locomotives on different tracks going forward. Mm -hmm. One of the locomotives is research, uh, research images, and just, just getting images on the wall that could spark reactions from Jason or, or ex enthusiasm or excitement about a particular location or a particular um, uh, visual thematic element or a feeling or, or um, so, th so we started just pinning stuff up, pinning stuff up from books about uh, who this guy was, uh, Evo Shandar, uh, what kind of architect he was, you know, there's, there's a, it was very exciting for me to, to, to really explore a character who had just been spoken about, uh, in these other movies, but, but he's just, he's a complete mystery, right? Evo Shandor right. is a mystery. Well, right. turns out he's gone to this town in Oklahoma, uh, with his followers. And, and so, and that, that, that little, that idea creates a whole snowball of, of, of backstory and the backstory. Gozer, the Gozer worshipers and like, yeah. what was this world like that mm -hmm. we heard about, but we didn't really get right. to see. Mm -hmm. And Over. I think that that sparked that, that call to John DeCure uh, Jr. Right, Francois? Yes. Early on. Yeah, yeah, great. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, one of the, um, when, when I was talking to, to, to Jason, we were both just such big fans of the original film. Um, Primarily just because it was so beautifully crafted. I mean, it's just like a classic, classically made, crafted Hollywood movie where uh, the production designer, John DeCure Sr., you know, approached the material with the reverence of any other uh, Hollywood studio picture. You know, I mean, it was it, it was kind of it's it's kind of a, a it, could, it could be thought of as a bit of a silly idea. But you in order to for it to be real. You have to believe. I mean, we all, we all have to be believers. We have to believe in the in the narrative, and we have to build the world, the story world, with as much uh, reverence and logic as possible, so the audience believes as well. Right? We're, we make sure. believe. <laughs> it's also one of those things where where uh, and we talked about this uh, when we talked to Arian a couple weeks ago. Uh, the average, you know, everyday film goer. Uh, these things affect them sometimes on a subconscious level. They don't necessarily know, you know, I talked to my mom, she loved Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I could, I could tell that things like the set design and like the world building and like mm -hmm. the practical effects all affected her. She wouldn't necessarily articulate that, but she's just like, there's just something about it that feels different. I was like, well, there's a million things about it and, and literally years of work that go into mm -hmm. creating Making. that feeling, mm -hmm. in, you know, in the movie goer. So the lived in world. Well, yeah. You know. I'm glad you picked that up, picked up on that because that was designed uh, like baked into the process early on. Um, like Ozzy mentioned, I called John DeCure Jr. Uh, like a day four, <laughs> I think, <laughs> who is, who's, who's John DeCure Sr.'s son and happened to be the supervising art director on the original Ghostbusters. And I asked John, like, well, what was it? How did you do it? What, why is it so, why was the original Ghostbusters so um, believable and grounded and, and just like, just so good, you know, and how, mm -hmm. how do, what advice would you give us to follow? And he had some, he was incredibly uh, open and forthcoming and, and told us about, uh, first of all, his father was an, uh, was an incredible draftsman. Um, and, but also they, they, um, they, they had this anchor uh, go central that anchored the movie visually. 
and became um, like this architectural sort of like uh, cornerstone that the rest of the movie was built upon. And so it was, um, and, 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 you know, we learned a lot about how that came to be and about the inspiration for Ghost Central. Uh, who's the architect of, of that, Ozzy? Oh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I mean, like they had. When, I believe his name is Evo on, Shandor. We'll just no, no, but, but, but before they were, the, who they patterned Evo Shandor after? Yeah. In their heads, when they were designing the um, the architecture and the Art Deco kind of motif around Spook Central, the um, there was a specific architect that whose name I. It's been three years, um, and it's probably it's in okay. the book. It, it probably is. It is in the book. Actually. It is in the book. <laughs> um, and. You know, and Louis we immediately Sullivan. Louis Sullivan. Yep. There you go. Louis Sullivan. And uh and and so we immediately like dove into Louis Sullivan. And then there was another sculptor, uh Francois, remember, who was uh, super uh, influential and, and there was some brutalist stuff that we were looking in the at. book. Don't it's give it away. You gotta get yeah. the book. This is all for, by the way, if any of our listeners or anybody viewing this, if you don't have the book, um it's it's a must own. If you're gonna own one piece, and I, I say this. You're, you're talking to somebody who has probably more merchandise uh, than than you, than I should as a human being. Uh, if you're going to own one thing from Ghostbusters Afterlife, it really is this book because it's so full, it's so inspiring. And the uh, Ozzy, the way that you kind of tell the story, um, sometimes these art books are literally just pictures, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes uh, you know they are uh, they go you know super in depth, or maybe it's just mostly concept illustration. But there's really um, there's like a woven narrative with yeah, this it's, that it's enjoyable to yeah. You can go through and look at the pictures, but it's really valuable to go back and read. Yeah, uh, Abby, I think that's a, that's a really good point. And I think, uh, and I'm really proud of the book. I mean, the book is spectacular, not only because it's full of all the concept art, but because it does have, uh, like you say, like a narrative about the process of bringing a movie like this to life. It's not just just paying for a bunch of concept art and and picking the best concept art and putting it, you know, in the, in the movie. Right. It's about... It really talks about the process and the approach to um, to world building Ghostbusters and and how we came and invented this backstory and also created sort of a production methodology of like half hand craftsmanship mm -hmm. that echoed the original sort of like uh, the original way that the original movie was made. So there's hopefully when you see Ghostbusters Afterlife, there is a there's this sort of like feeling that you of, of like, I've eaten this meal before, you know, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a familiar yeah. magic. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. And that, that is because we, I mean, we really tried to make this movie as if the, 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 the you know, the original crew made it right. back in, back in well, 1984. It comes through and Bryn, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the, the artwork that, so we're, such huge movie fans and anytime when we get obsessed with a, a movie or a franchise mm -hmm. it, digging in and seeing you know the concept art the creature design and unfortunately all the amazing stuff that doesn't make the movie because like any movie like the, you can't put it all in there it's just the way it is but yeah flipping through the book for the first time can you talk a little bit about your approach like what what was the directive you were given and i have to ask this and listen we've had jason on the show he does seem like one of the great guys, right? This is just a really uh, a brilliant, wonderful. Well, he's a huge movie fan, just like just yeah. like mm. all of us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I want to know, and maybe you can all speak to this. What to get that checkbox to get that that approval? Like, you know, I always go back to if if I'm maybe you've seen it. There's a great documentary about the Phantom Menace. Uh, it's like a two hour making of and there's this one great scene where all the concept artists have a hundred things on the wall and George Lucas is you know sitting there going nope 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 <laughs> nope nope yes no no um, so is that what happened is that what Jason did <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> so if you could just walk us through it uh, you know what what the process is like yeah I mean I think Jason is a very personable and collaborative director he's um extremely sweet and also does know what he wants but he enjoys the journey of getting there I think um and so when I was hired on um to explore characters for Jason one of the first characters I started on was Muncher and Muncher took from I started in February so 
month two of this production. Mm -hmm. um, Muncher took from February until May, you know, and it was that lo that long. So we were working on Muncher through throughout all the other characters, and um, you know, he described him in kind of a vague way. So it was sort of this. Um, almost a goose chase <laughs> trying to find him where we were going in this direction and we didn't like that direction. We go in this direction, you know, we were trying to pull all these different references, trying to make stories about who Muncher was and mm -hmm. his backstory and the lore. How did he that. describe, do you remember the words that he used in the beginning as to how he described Muncher? He described him as um, sort of like a, a weird little bulldog like <laughs> coin purse like he wanted him to be like something that could empty out all of the metal out of his body okay and um and the early storyboard that was pitched to me to to show muncher in action was the one where um they're chasing him through town in ecto one and like mm -hmm. you know firing off and destroying everything in the process and um the storyboard artist had kind of drawn him as this little bulldoggy looking monster and and there was something about that that kind of helped and so we started in that direction and we ended up not going in that direction but it was a good spot to start so um yeah it jason was was not very he wasn't like no 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 yes he would kind of stand there and be like i kind of like this little guy right here and it would be like the most random doodle that i put up that day right. and it was mm -hmm. like, you know just and I had all these, like I drew hundreds and hundreds of munchers. Like I have a whole flat file just full of drawings. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm -hmm. you know, full. And so, wow. um, but he has like, there's this little pencil doodle and he's like, that one, can you, can you do something with that <laughs> one? one? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> and well, so what, he's just there. And <laughs> you know, what's really impressive about, uh, I mean, Bryn is so impressive, but what's so impressive about her is that she has such like an understanding of an, of animal anatomy she can. She will talk about the the this certain muscle and know the new word for it that it's between like your neck and your I don't know what even what that is back there. Oh, but she'll know the name of it. muscle. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> anatomy. I love it. I love it. I, I, nice. That's one blind spot. I know nothing about anatomy. I I, th I think the back is just one muscle or something. Yeah, I don't the know. back no, muscle. I pulled my back. back. <laughs> Which one? The whole thing. Just pull. Mm -hmm. Pull the whole thing. Um, but so so she real. so she could. I mean, she created an entire like skeletal system and musculature system for Muncher and for all of the all of the creatures that she worked on. She, so and 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 by doing that, she can then draw like a million drawings of that character in every different uh, situation right and, right yeah and and that's and what she really did that was phenomenal is she brought like like a whole nother level of of realism and scientific accuracy mm -hmm. to the terror dogs which hadn't existed before like we all knew we all know in our if we like close our eyes we all know what a terror dog is supposed to look like but there's there was she she we didn't even know this but Bryn is like well there you know there's these prop the problems with the terror dog and and with the anatomy of the hind mm -hmm. legs of this and it wouldn't be mm -hmm. able to do this and that and so it was uh there was a forensic uh deconstruction of the terror dog that I thought was uh that that helped to yield an even better more articulate more believable terror dog uh, really the the script, there was stuff in the script that that we never saw the original terror dog do I remember that was the that was the the trick, right, Bryn? Where yeah. you, you, yeah, were, that you was... were you were trying to do this dance of like capturing <laughs> well... the same the same terror dog, but also allowing it to do these things credibly mm -hmm. that the the new script and the new story were were asking. Yes, that was the biggest challenge. I think was trying to remain, and that was one of the, one of the things I think I was asked early on was like, what makes a Ghostbusters monster ghost? Mm -hmm. You know, Ghostbusters. What is the flavor and you know, I, I answered that question with like, it needs to be iconic. You need, you, a kid needs to be able to draw it, you know, uh, and remember it. And I think the terror dog is a really good example of that. It's like a big gray dog with red eyes and horns. And like, yeah. most people can draw that and remember that. And so a lot of what I was trying to do was trying to bridge the original 84 version and keeping the legacy of that creature intact, but also trying to make it feel heavy and have some weight and some credibility to mm -hmm. the body plan of it so it had room to move around and actually be animated in a way 
that it, it needed to be because Jason had it running through streets and like attacking cars <laughs> and doing all this crazy stuff. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is so much different than like hopping down to Central Park. You know, right. the, one, that we got. the one shot in, the, in, the, <laughs> yeah. in Ghostbusters where you see the terror dog move. It's, it's a it's a very it's a hop. It's more of yeah, a hop like than a anything. And now we're yeah. you know, <laughs> smashing through Walmart. And it's kind of like as a, somebody who's seen the you know, movie so many times uh, or the first one, 84, when you the first time like jake we're in the theater we 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 were at the new york comic con screening was the first time we saw it so wow. it was just this like you know larger than life moment and there's thousands of people in the cast and crew and we're, we're literally like in the front row, I, like, for aftermath for the for the new movie for afterlife, afterlife. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was that was i think one of the very the best screenings of the entire i mean uh jason said it was like the, one of the best screenings of his life it was unbelievable it was, it was yeah. and, and and it was that it was the best screening like, of my life yeah, mm-hmm. it's the best screen of our life. <laughs> we, we've been, we were so lucky. Um, Ghost Corps uh, and, and Eric, they've been so uh, kind to us and, and to, you know, get invites to things like that and to, to have in, in any kind of involvement with this franchise that we love is, is really special for us. Um, but sitting there and seeing these iconic creatures and seeing the terror dog literally like moving in a way that you imagined your whole life but uh you never thought you would see it you know on screen it was it was uh, mm. surreal is the only word that comes to mind yeah. but there's yeah. probably a better way to describe mind blowing like uh, honestly cuz your mind reacts to it like there's not you don't think like oh that's supposed to be a terror dog it's just like that is a terror dog and right. i think that is attributed to Bryn to all of your like uh detail with those the sketches like right. to, and, and like all, all the uh the note taking and all like, the uh at one point i think i read that there was uh like the dro- the drool of the terror dog is like ammonia and jasmine and i thought that was mm-hmm. so cool and also Thanks. you had a, there were a bunch of ghosts that didn't get used that i'm like yeah, oh, yeah. More of. i want to talk about that also i've never wanted the anatomy of ghostbusters creatures as a book like that. Yeah, like a field stuff. guide. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Awesome. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell them I'm down for it anytime. Yeah, Ozzy, we'll we'll, we'll talk. I, I've got I got Eric. ten ideas for for the next round of things. This is a whole series. We got ideas. Encyclopedia Britannica level. I love you know, it. We, we, I love we need it. The documentation. Um, that was one thing we tried to do too. Anytime I put a new ghost on the wall, I would try to put it into the like taxonomy of ghosts of Ghostbusters. Like what? What level specter is it? it was yeah, a lot of fun to right. Do that, so, mm-hmm. well, well I, I told Brent too. Like, uh, put lots of notes in your drawings because I, mm-hmm. I, I think notes are great and they remind. I, I love uh, the artwork of the the late uh, Ron Cobb, um, uh, who who you know he was famous for designing the the creatures in the original Star Wars cantina. And if you look at like some of the great, my favorite like uh, alien drawings are Ron Cobb's drawings of like the ha- of Hammerhead. Cause, and it, cause it has these little notes that talk about Hammerhead's planet and, and what, you know, <laughs> and his religion and things like that. And I right. thought, man, and so Bryn took, took a page out of that. And so, you know, you can see it in the book, in the plug mm-hmm. to the book, mm-hmm. you can see Bryn's all the little notes about the character backstories for, for, for these creatures and aliens, which I think is a lot of fun because and it, it adds realism and it adds layers for, to, to refer to, you know? Well, it also, yeah. it, it adds to the lore. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, Mm -hmm. when we think about this movie and and Francois, you were talking about it earlier Mm -hmm. in in, in Ozzy about the, you know, in, in Ghostbusters uh, 84, uh, this scene where they talk about Evo Shandor uh, it's, it's expository. It happens in the jail scene and hardcore fans have been holding on to, you know, that, you know, two minute discussion for over 30 years, but finally getting a chance to like flesh it out a little bit and be mm-hmm. like, okay, we get to see Evo Shandor uh, ripped in half. See, yeah. <laughs> to <the> spirit guide. <laughs> yeah. Um, getting back, I want I, I think Muncher quickly became iconic and I think it's such a testament to, to the amount of work that you went into getting it right because no matter what, even though Slimer's not in this movie, Slimer will always kind of be like that mascot of Ghostbusters. There's mm-hmm. always going to be those comparisons. And to Absolutely. me, Muncher immediately became an iconic Ghostbusters, you know, uh, uh, mascot or a representative. And th- it's the uniqueness and mm-hmm. the, 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 you know, the way he moves, the facial expressions, and you can see it in the evolution of, of the drawings that you did. Um, do you feel as an artist, is it, is that a challenge that's a little scary? Is there pressure on that? Or do you not even consider what, you know, what came before? 
Um, no, I mean, I absolutely was looking to 84 as a, as a guide and Ozzy was great because he, he would give me all of these like archives of old concept art from the original. And so I had all of these amazing drawings of some of the ghosts that were being thrown around for the 84 version. And it really helped me kind of pinpoint the sort of flavor I was looking for. Right. Muncher went through, through so many different, you know, iterations and, and we were, me and Francois would talk about, you know, what's Muncher's story, you know, I, and I was trying to um, be like, oh, he's an old miner that got like trapped and now he haunts the place and he was brought back by a seance and like the, you know, <laughs> 70s and has yeah. been there ever since. And like all this lore I was trying to kind of like make up, you know, mm-hmm. and um, but yeah, finding his like look is is a lot of pressure because you want to make sure that it's it it has the same vibe, but that it's different. Um, that it's scary, but also a little endearing. Like mm-hmm. we wanted Muncher to kind of have these moments where you were like, oh, he's kind of cute. And then yes. suddenly he turns, you know? <laughs> yes. So. Or you, it's like you feel bad for him a little bit. Like there's some sympathy yeah. that he's sad, but then he goes to scary so fast. It's a, it's and that, a really good abs- flip. Yeah. And that was one of the, the bits of story I really wanted to give to Muncher because Muncher's whole deal is that he's constantly seeking metal. And something we talked about a lot in, in de- exploring Muncher was he's greedy and he's trying to, to get something, but there's nothing in it. And it's like, you know, mining, just all of this kind of like culture around that or this like mm-hmm. lore around that is kind of interesting. It's sort of, he's like always grabbing, but can't get enough. Oh, interesting. And it's oh, get it, kind of st- deep. Yeah. yeah, there's a microcosm like, oh, for the entire town. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's, so in the early designs of Muncher, I actually, um, you know, was exploring like his hands being more of a thing where they were really grabby and like lots of fingers, like really scary, kind of spidery. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that that's sort of also what led to him having multiple arms was not only him like being kind of in a pipe world and in mm-hmm. caves, he's always like kind of moving around like a little, you know, primate running around yeah. but so maybe he has multiple arms um but also that he he's greedy he can't get enough it's sort of this like take 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 and so it's that's kind of an interesting symbolic insatiable thing. yeah 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 it's interesting <laughs> to think of um, this is getting pretty deep nerdy level but i love it like to <laughs> God, think I of uh you know the the actual uh you know what 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 the ghost's needs are as a human, you know, manifesting itself in the paranormal version of, I I like that. I think we can go further with that. Uh, Jake, Mm -hmm. I want to bring you in on this conversation about Muncher specifically, Jake, as an artist, not to put you on the spot. um, We've talked so much about how artists for 30 years have been trying to recreate Slimer's likeness and have gotten it wrong. Yeah. We talked about this with Arian. Do you think Muncher, is it going to fall into the same? Are people going to struggle to capture uh, Muncher in? And we hope Bryn is the only person doing Muncher for the next thirty <laughs> years. But eventually, there's going to be a comic book or a cartoon or something where somebody else is tackling him. And I, I want them to get him right. Do you think they will? Uh, well, do I think they will? Probably not. But um, I think that's not a bad thing. Like that's the good thing. One of the, we've said it before. The problem with Slimer is always that you look at him and your mind thinks it's very simple, but it's not. Mm-hmm. And I th- and and mm-hmm. I think uh, Muncher's exactly the same in that kind of way. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I also wanted to point out, Craig. I know you, you won't say this, but you are the winner of the Draw Slimer uh, comic book <laughs> I did. contest. I'll have like to show off my winnings. When I was five years old, I got into the real Ghostbusters comic book. So, uh, <laughs> news alert: they let everybody who sent one in uh, be aware. winner. <laughs> and yes. mine- not good. It's not, not good. good my, mine was the paper. only one on lined paper, so you can see the lines printed in the comic book. Um, oh, that's so, <laughs> Ozzy, Francois, Bryn, going back, the movie's in motion, production design is happening, character design is happening, they're getting the sets, you know, ready. How, you know, I think, gosh, when did it start shooting? Was it June of 2019? July? Something along those lines. It was like July, fifteen or, years or ago. It, <laughs> it was the summer, sometime. I, I don't. I couldn't tell you the exact month. But I, I thought what you were going to say, Craig. All of this is happening, and then Ivan Reitman walks in, which <laughs> would happen. <laughs> okay, um, and that's I actually know, what I want to say. Go there's for a it. great. There's a. There's some kind of from. I mean, from all of our perspectives, like okay, and not, this is Jason's movie, obviously, and then. I, but it's it's also which is what makes the book I think so interesting that it allowed 
me to tell that story of, which is so unique um, to have, you know, uh, the, the, the son kind of picking up the reins from the, the father and something that means so much to, to him and as a family and their close friends, the, the, the Ramuses and the Ackroyds and all that. And mm-hmm. so it, it, was, it's, it was great when we'd be up there and then suddenly Dan Ackroyd would pop up or <laughs> Ivan Reitman would pop up. And it was a bit, um, I mean, I guess, Francois, you should talk about what that felt like as um, a movie lover. And it was sometimes intimidating. Like, should I, you know, and, and Bryn too, because I remember he would walk right by your desk. <laughs> Bryn when he'd come oh, in yeah. and, he would, <laughs> and sometimes Jason would be with him and sometimes he would he wouldn't be with him and we'd be waiting well, for well, Jason. What was really funny is when um, Ivan would come up sort of like unannounced because his office is right downstairs. We're literally in these offices above Ghost Corps. So he'd come he'd come by and would have like a model of would have a model of the, the, uh, the temple interior the temple. and would have a bunch of artwork up that we that that getting ready for a presentation with Jason and Jason isn't around. And so Ivan comes in and he, and he can't help it. He's been directing for 30, 40 years, you know? So he start <laughs> he starts reacting to all this stuff and his assistants like trying to get Jason on the phone. Your dad's over here and he's directing again. No, no, yes, yes. You're out of here. <laughs> It's just, um, it's just his programming and he's yeah. just so honest and, and, and I think just so enthusiastic about seeing all this stuff again. So, uh, so it was, I mean, it was lovely to have, and I, I mean, it was incredible to have uh, Ivan there. We had a, we, at one point we couldn't figure out what the color of the original slime was because there's all this information online. You can't really tell what the exact color is. And then, uh, you know, uh, Jason was able to, to be like, dad, which which one of these is right? And he'd go, oh no, that one, that one. This is the one we had, and it was yeah. it was great to have somebody who lived through it to, right. to be able to to kind of or the the, the logo on the Ecto one that was kind of a, a something that was just what felt right that that the, the first pass of it, and then he was like, no, there were vinyl letters on the on the on the on the original car that we shot in '84. Oh yeah, because um, so I had done like a- that, which was amazing. I had done a design where the uh, the old Ecto one has I, I th- has like you could see like the like a, the paint wearing off of the logo, and so but I, did, I I couldn't I wanted to know well was the original car vinyl or paint right. and he was able to say no it was paint so then that gave me the opportunity it was vinyl. Yeah. to make or he was it was vinyl sorry so it gave me the opportunity to design the logo so that the vinyl was cracking over over time and right. you could see little fissures in the, in the vinyl. What an invaluable resource, but also like I, I, you know, we've had the chance to be around Ivan a couple of times and I, I, he, he, I think he's a little intimidating. Just he has got that, that <laughs> we've all talked about it. Like uh, Jake thinks Ivan hates us. No, he, he just always gives <laughs> us this look like, oh, they're here again. So like, those guys again. <laughs> Why um, are they at everything? <laughs> um, no, but. I mean, how special is that? And such, it's so unique because like when we're at Ghostbusters Fan Fest and we got to see, uh, Ivan and Jason on stage together, they have such a reverence for each other, such a respect, right. but I'm sure they also butt heads like any, you know, like any yeah. collaboration with it, you know, on any creative well, team. Well, for me, and I don't know how everyone else felt, but for me, I was, it, I felt intimidated because I felt like I was being invited into the, a, a, literally a family, yeah. like, yeah. like into a family, like whose family, mm-hmm. you know, some family businesses, uh, make pizzas or whatever uh, the right men's make movies and, right uh, really and, good ones too yeah really mm-hmm. good ones i mean so many classic movies and i was like the new guy to be invited into the family and so i just wanted to be i just didn't want to mess it up and and uh in any way and uh and this was this movie i can't tell you how important it was to it is to jason and and to all the family members of this franchise who had been um, like intru- uh, like linked. They, they, it's part of their souls you know, mm-hmm. right. th- th- this franchise. It's so important. And, um, and I, I felt like over the 11 months of the movie, it was this, it was very, uh, there was a weight, you know, there really was a weight to, to, mm-hmm. to, 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 to just do a good job, quite frankly, you know? Uh, because well, it, 
it we, we all owe it to the fans and to the to to just uh, to, to to everybody, all the great artisans and artists who have been attached to this to all these movies. Yeah, you know, you can't even really compare it to anything. Like I've tried to draw comparisons to you know, you know. I, yeah, Star Wars coming back is one thing, but it's also Star Wars has come back multiple times. Like this was such a to get this team of people with this much reverence, uh, this much you know connective tissue to the original, and to execute it with like the precision. Like uh, Francois, we were watching. You know, this was kind of serendipitous. The the tested video that you did with Adam Savage was released, I believe, yesterday, and we mm-hmm. watched it this morning. Um, and that's a really, I don't, I'm sure anybody watching this has already watched that multiple times, mm-hmm. but you know, when you're talking about the, the detail of, uh, you know, the farmhouse and the, mm-hmm. the, the, the precision the, of piecemealing that out growing corn. Did you know that you'd be growing corn for this <laughs> movie? Like that's part of the production. I kind of figured, yeah, I kind of, I mean, I was literally, I, I was so scared that the corn wasn't going to grow high enough that I was, yeah. me and my art director were literally weeding uh like an acre of corn where we were like pulling weeds out because the weeds were sucking nitrogen that the i was convinced that the wheat the, that the weeds were and it was just were was stunting the growth of the corn yeah i mean yeah. it, just, just learn botany it's for the show <laughs> i know you just, just roll real with quick. it craig you craig you were saying like you're trying to think about why this feels so different and trying mm-hmm. to think of other, and it, it sounds to me like listening to all three of you guys and either other people we've talked to, it sounds like Jason was really smart and he kind of went on a quest <laughs> to put together an Avengers style team, team. of people who were yeah. not just like, not just doing a job, you know, but like doing mm-hmm. something they love for enjoying it. Well, yeah, like for well, a franchise that everybody in it, like, like when the Muppets built get the there. foundation yeah. of <laughs> this movie, you know, I mean, I'll tell you two things. Number one is when Jason interviewed a department head, he, he asked me and he asked everybody, I saw him do it. Are, are you a Ghostbusters fan? And what's your favorite? What was your favorite thing in the movie? It would be like, that would be the final test, right? So you had to kind of pass <laughs> that test in order to, to work on Ghostbusters. So you're right. The entire crew, we were all huge fans of the, uh, especially the 84 Ghostbusters movie. Uh, and, and because we had to pass that litmus test, otherwise we wouldn't have been hired. Yeah. Right. The second we thing all... is, yeah, the it. second yeah. thing I just wanted to say is that Jason comes from a background of making movies that are, uh, that are shot in real places without really any CGI, you know, uh, n- not on a soundstage, but in real places with real, in real situations. And it's, it's got, it's, these movies have got a very grounded uh, quality to them. Right. And so he would, you know, when, when we would propose different solutions to problems, he would go, you know, it, whether it would be like, oh, well, we'll put a blue screen up or, you know, we'll just put, stick a, tennis ball on a C stand and put it in later or whatever it could go. Well, wait, that, that'll, that's fake. That'll be fake. And <laughs> filmmakers aren't supposed to say the word fake. Like it really, <laughs> it, it was like, it kind of like made me jump. I'm like, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to say fake where it's all fake. Everything's fake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it kind of hurts when someone says fake, the fake word. Right. And yeah. so it drove, but it drove us all to like, Ooh, I don't want to be called fake. We want to do it for, cause that doesn't sound very good. So as right. a, I think as a result of that, the fake word, Mm-hmm. It drove like me to build a farmhouse that was a real farmhouse uh, outside that you could shoot in, you know, interior, exterior, shoot in any direction. It was like, the, it was real. It was completely mm-hmm. real. And a lot of the locations and sets had a quality to them that made it feel like they had, they were real locations. They were, they, they, none of the locations or sets were, well, you can only shoot in this direction, and you know it's, they're very, very immersive. And I think that you can feel that when you're 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 watching the movie, you're feeling like like we actually went to Somerville. Hopefully, you know. Mm-hmm. Couple things on that. First of all, the farmhouse to me, it, the first time we saw it in that first trailer, it was like instantly iconic. Look at that. That looks like the scariest place that's ever existed, and I want to mm-hmm. sleep there, you know, tonight. <laughs> 
Um, yep. There was that shot. Uh, the there was a I think a publicity still that came out, Ecto you know, a couple months before house. the movie with the yeah. Ecto one and at, at mm-hmm. night in front of the firehouse. And it's just to me Farm was just house. like, what did I call it? Fire. Firehouse. I call it the firehouse. Yeah. Sorry. Old house. <laughs> Old house. <laughs> um, in front of the farmhouse, and it was just like. It, it was interesting because you started getting that feeling like this is a Ghostbusters movie. We know it's a Ghostbusters movie. It's going to have all the iconography. It's going to have, you know, the original team and it's going to have the logo and the proton packs and everything. But this is different. Everything about this, this is not what we were accustomed to. And also we've talked about this ad nauseum, but I'll say it again. It, this seems like the least likely way this movie, like, we always assumed if they were ever going to do another movie in the original universe, it would be that same new team getting back together in New York, busting ghosts, you know, a couple comedians. It'll probably be pretty good, but won't, you know, won't hold a candle to the originals. But this approach was so drastically different and so unlikely that it it, it got the excitement was like palpable for us. Like for uh-huh. unfortunately, I think. Mm-hmm. 10 12 years before it finally came out uh but uh it, it felt like that but you know with every delay it was just crushing but um mm-hmm. it, it just you know and then uh francois wanted to touch on this it's in the book a little bit um recreating uh from the original blueprints the the raise a cult uh set oh, yeah. from ghostbusters wow. 2 we, we are huge ghostbusters wow. by the way if we sat down to interview for afterlife we'd all fail the interview because Jason would go, what's your favorite thing from Ghostbusters? Like Statue of Liberty. (laughs) (laughs) Pink slime, slime blowers. We we love Ghostbusters too. Um, But yeah, can can you talk like, that seems like a really unique challenge to to redesign something. So uh, yeah, Raise a Cult was featured in the second movie. uh, And we called Sony. I think Ozzy, you called Sony. We couldn't, there were no blueprints. There were no blueprints. Nothing had been saved. Nothing. Mm-hmm. I, I happen to be friends with the art director from, um, from Ghostbusters to Tom Duffield. And so I, I emailed him and he went through all his archives. He didn't have any blueprints. Nobody had any blueprints. So we ended up having to, uh, uh, what did we do? We got every still we could find and we rebuilt it in 3d so that we could line up everything so you know all the shelves and everything could line up with the stills that we had the other thing that we did now it's coming back to me we found some um original uh, uh insurance like schematics from like 100 years ago from new york which gave us the 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 width and the depth of the location in oh, wow. St. Paul's Place, I think. Is, it, is that yeah. what it's called? St. Mark's like Place. I think. St. Mark's Place. That's right. St. Mm-hmm. Mark's Place. So we had kind of like the overall footprint that it would be in. And um, th- it was very much like putting together like a, yeah, like a, a forensic recreation of something that had happened. Um, but the, the, my, 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 my biggest, my best memory of that location is that we, we built it. We filled it up with, with with books and and we came up with this whole story as it's like well what has he been doing like what's ray been doing all these years he's still in business how did that happen what is he selling how how is he staying in business now Mm -hmm. that there's amazon i mean that must be hard so uh so we gave him we figured that he's selling like crystals and like kind of like new agey stuff too and so there's like there's incense and uh, he, there's a, there's like a hand reader in the back. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he's, and he's selling all sorts of stuff and he's got, he's got like a, uh, you know, he's probably got, he's got stuff on eBay. Right. And um, mm-hmm. I'm surprised there wasn't a crystal head vodka uh, in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what we did, what we, what we did is we put all this stuff in there and then I, I, I brought in a dust machine which is this this Hollywood old Hollywood device? You spin it, and the dust goes everywhere, and it goes oh, down. Wow. And then the last thing I did is I I actually lit a bunch of incense and, and patchouli and stuff. And so and I swear to God, it smelled like an old book bookstore. And mm-hmm. when when uh, when Dan Aykroyd came in, he I could just t- I mean he was just so elated. He was <laughs> like he was like home again, you know. And I yeah. gave him made business cards i gave him a a stack of business cards to put in his pocket and he was he was just he was just so happy it was just it was the one of the best days of my life Mm -hmm. oh that sounds incredible i mean that 
the scene in the movie is is amazing. We first saw it in the you know I don't think any of us were expecting to see Ray's a cult like that was a, no. a secret well well kept. Um, mm. But when it when it first cuts to Ray and he's dusting off one of the crystals, like it's just <laughs> it's just funny. Like it's mm-hmm. one of those subtle funny things that is very Ghostbusters that yeah. you, you might not. Pick I love up he has a red stuff. phone too. You know, it's like right. a bad phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. right right it's um, it's familiar even though it's obviously all new stuff that you're bringing in it just right. it feels like it should feel when you watch it yeah um uh we're gonna wrap up pretty soon i want to be respectful of everybody's time but i feel like we've i feel like we could have hours of conversations with all of you <laughs> yeah we oh haven't God, talked we, about we, the chicken sandwich oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about it we got to oh my god um, I, just w- I, I just wish that Demetrodon was when I when I opened the book <laughs> and saw that there was a ghost dinosaur. I was like, well, who do I who do I call to complain that this is not? <laughs> yeah, and the crossing guard ghost too. Another one. That oh, I wanted yeah. To see. yeah, yeah. There I, were so uh, many. Oh man, there were so many good. There's dads, a story right? behind the crossing guard, right, uh, Bryn? There I is. Think. Yeah, and and even the Demetrodon. I mean, part of you know, like Francois said, with notes and stuff. Part of what I like to do in my concept work is work with lore and world building and trying to pull from a place. And so because we're in Oklahoma, you know, I was like, wouldn't it be great if everyone's ghost showed up and, you know, Demetrodons roamed Oklahoma, early Oklahoma. <laughs> and um, I just thought it would be great. <laughs> so yeah, it would that be. In there. we think it's great then, too. Yeah. It's really great. <laughs> Maybe and, one day. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's a whole cool. series of movies and, and yeah. it was an animated series of ghost dinosaurs waiting mm-hmm. to happen. <laughs> Well, um, I mean, if the only if I may just interject one thing, sure. this is what we do in the art department. We create backstory, and that's like an extreme case of backstory where Bryn was actually thinking about the way, 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 way backstory <laughs> of Summerland. <laughs> yes. But but this is what I mean. As all I I'm only as good as the as the team that I put together, and so I, I I'm trying to inspire everyone to come up with their own contribution to that backstory and. Back to the book again, I think the book is unique because it's really about world building, the world building of Ghostbusters Afterlife. And it will tell you all of this, these, these details that, that, that where you'll understand why the movie feels the way that it does, you know? Right. And the mini puffs, which, I mean, Bryn, you had so much fun with that early on. We went to the market. We bought, remember we yeah. got the- and We did, yeah. We, we bought real marshmallows and we yeah. built a little, a yeah. little, a little mini puff. We, we, made, we made real marshmallows with toothpicks and real and marshmallows, all different sizes as a jumping off point. Yeah. It was and then it, fun, yeah. It was great That's fun. such Absolutely. good research. Yeah. Bryn had oh. so much fun doing those-, those Yeah, and we- I even mm-hmm. remember like cutting out some of the concept art once we got the design approved to scale and I put it around the office in hidden places. So when people would like open cabinets, there would be like oh. a mini puff, like, oh, I love that. <laughs> just, like yes. taped to the back of the wall. Like, yes. oh. <laughs> what, a, what a unique experience. I'm going to do that in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you talk about world building, like you're all in this close knit kind of family for, for a very long time where you have like, by time we all found out about mini puffs, like that's old, like you've been working, designing and playing with mini puffs for, for two years at that point. So I can't imagine the relief that comes of like, yeah. finally we can like, mm-hmm. you know, let the cat out of the bag a little bit. It um, was really special to see him come out of that little bag. And, and it's incredible. You know, it was it's, like, Oh, uh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> finally, There he is. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Brent, I should say on social media, you've been post. you posted a really your post today was awesome. I think we oh, were thank tweeted you. it where you the original scouting shots and then you animated some mini puffs on there for you know for concept stuff. It's just yeah. really, really fun stuff. Um we got to talk about Bug Eye Ghost. This is important. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um nobody's been able to answer this. So hopefully between all of us, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Bryn, we the mm-hmm. concepts are are amazing. Obviously, thank this you. is inspired by he's back there somewhere uh the original yeah. kenner uh action figure um mm-hmm. we've long we've had i'll call jake at two in the morning like hey i know it's a school night but let's talk about <laughs> what kenner ghosts we want in our ghostbusters <laughs> yeah um, look at weekly conversation yeah, yeah, we've, yeah. uh where did it come from how, how did this happen it was so delightful to see it on screen it we we, we all collectively went whoa like a like a like you know like children, but it was amazing. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, I remember from what I remember, Bug Eye. So when the pandemic, like lockdown, started and everything was kind of delayed, we there was suddenly this like gap, 
And Jason called me and was like, hey, are you still around to do concepts? We have some extra time now. Mm -hmm. Um, Could we meet up and and talk about some more ghosts? And I was like, sure. So it was like, we didn't really, (laughs) we didn't wear masks or anything. We weren't sure what to do yet because it was that Mm -hmm. early and all of it. (laughs) So we were like in this office and um, hanging out. And he was like, you know, we want to bring this ghost in bug eye. And, you know, they had photos of the... um, action figure i think ozzy you might have sent me photos of the action figure and like comic book or maybe photos. eric oh i think it was yeah. eric yes it was and so um you know and i um told my husband and he was like thrilled because he had the action figure as a kid and so he's like Love oh my that. god um but i was like yeah okay so i remember sitting on the couch next to jason while we were talking about other ghosts we could make and i sketched out all of, all of bug eye just kind of right there next to him on my ipad um working with him. And, and that was, that was kind of the beginning of him. Um, and then from there I handed off the, the concepts and they made him real. And I did do a storyboard of him coming out of the, out of the little build, the building. Right, he right. sort of snaps in the eye comes out first and he snaps into it. And then he flies away. That was mm-hmm. the storyboard mm-hmm. that I, I did, but um, that's incredible. Yeah. It was, it was really cool to, to see him come to life because he was such an obscure kind of character. Um, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I mean, that that goes way back. That's really cool that you're going to you know, bring him in. So <laughs> there was a lot of frustration with the with the with the lo- once the lockdown happened and the movie got delayed and then got delayed again and then got delayed again. But aside from what Bryn was talking about with the, you know, it allowed Jason to kind of keep looking at the movie and um, and adding a few other things. Um, and one of the things that it did um, and I'll, I'll give so much credit to Eric Reich at Ghost Corps um, was that we, because of COVID, we were able to make the book. Um, the book wasn't part of the original schedule only because the movie was coming out and it just didn't happen. And so because we had to lock down the movie got pushed, we were able to sit down and, you know, Francois and Eric called me and they said, hey, you did one of these um, for, uh, for another movie. Um, it, this would be a great book. And I was like, man, this would be an awesome book. And what was great was that um, usually for these types of concepts are, are, are making up uh, of books and we all have them. Um, a lot of it is, you know, press notes. They come together really fast mm-hmm. and you kind of don't even, I mean, like mm-hmm. they're not even, the images aren't credited. You don't really get to talk to the concept artist. Cause there's uh, usually no time. There's, there's no usually time. Mm-hmm. no time. And they put them together really fast for publicity and here, Jason was like on board, wanted to do, wanted to, ha- to have a great book. Um, and so did mm-hmm. Eric. And so um, we, of course, I knew where all the bodies were buried and was able to, <laughs> to exhume all the artwork. Mm-hmm. And then all, everybody that worked on the movie was um, kind of in lockdown. So I was able to call Arian and be like, hey, we're mm-hmm. doing a making of book. And I want, it, I want it to be like these types of making of books that we grew up with that mm-hmm. have all the mechanics that have the puppets that have all the artwork, the artwork that was thrown out, all the photos. And, um, and so everyone was kind of. And the in, costume in stuff, lockdown. all the costume. All the costume too. stuff. All I of called it, yeah. with Danny, Danny Glicker. I called him up and he's like, really? You know, every, everybody's uh, was a little bit um, kind of um, uh, unsure because it was, we were in lockdown and everything was, you know, super confidential. And I was like, no, this is legit. This is the real thing we're going to do. A really legitimate, um, awesome, you know, book that showcases not just, the, you know, the beautiful concept art, but really kind of takes everyone through the creative journey that we all went on. And um, and so that the lockdown kind of gave us gave us that we wouldn't have mm-hmm. had that um, we wouldn't have had a, a that that chronicle of 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 the making of of afterlife and that process. Every should mm-hmm. every movie should have a lockdown. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say I'm, silver I'm lining. To find the silver lining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah at, exactly. at this point, I'm, I'm I've you know, listen, the the pandemic's been horrible, but we got bug eye ghosts. We got an art book. I mean, I, I'm seeing <laughs> yeah. some. It is funny also to think about early pandemic when no one knew how to act. Like, oh my god! Yeah. There was people <laughs> yeah. wearing like, like fish tanks on their head. At the store. Like I remember like yeah. putting plastic gloves on to go to Walmart. Like what yeah. is happening? Here? Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we all had lots of toilet like, paper. Yeah, <laughs> lots, of yeah. Toilet, yeah. lots of toilet oh, paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> You, you guys absolutely did the book though. It, everything you just said, like it absolutely is amazing. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, like Craig earlier, you know, when you were saying that, like it, we kind of got the best case scenario out of a, mm-hmm. a film. 
And like the art books are something that I always look forward to. And I said to Craig and Abby, whenever we found out there was an art book coming, I was like, I hope it's one of the good art books, but not one of those, uh, <laughs> not one of those rushed ones. And, and it's, yeah. it's really like seeing all the production stuff and the, the right. concept art, everything. It's, right. mm-hmm. it's fantastic. And it, it only beca- exists because we're all fans and Ozzy's one of the biggest fans because it's not for the money. Let me tell you, it's for, <laughs> it's because it's for the love of the, of the material and it's the love of, of the franchise. And it's for, and it's for, you know, to try to do good by by everyone and make everybody proud yeah. well listen i'll say this mm-hmm. as we, we as we get towards the end we we've been for part of this fandom for a long time uh we're we're very involved in the community and in, in in a lot of different aspects obviously we have the podcast where we've you know we do the franchise stuff we've got props and and it, it, it can be like any fandom it can be fickle there's toxic elements of it that we we don't love and we fight against but i mean I don't think you could have had a better scenario. Like this movie is genuinely loved and cherished by uh, the fan base. So, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, just expressing gratitude for for the the amount of work that, that went into it and the love and passion that literally just pours off screen, everything, every shot, every, you know, every part of the set, the props, the costume, uh, uh, and the music, obviously, it just, it just, it's two hours of pure like cinematic delight. And you, mm-hmm. uh, you don't, th- those movies still exist, but I, I'd say they're few and far between these days. I agree. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was Francois, worth the wait. It was totally worth the wait. And mm-hmm. I, we, we are such fans of Logan, probably one of collectively as a podcast, one of our favorite movies of the last 10 years. So, you know, Ozzy, I know you, you know, you're saying you guys, you know, work so hard on that. And like, um, w- do you enjoy making adults cry? Is that what the, this is all about? I always feel like we, we have the burden of these, cr- these massive secrets on all these movies where we're like, <laughs> shit, Oh my God. We're going to keep this secret for two years. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We're going to kill. We're going to kill. <laughs> Wolverine <laughs> and <laughs> Professor X, and I have to live with that for years. Yeah, and ego. Spoiler alert. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 All this stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, well, if you haven't seen Logan, you know. Get get with the program. Get with it. Yeah. Um, Jake's got selfies of him crying after Logan. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you do, Jake. I do. Yeah, yeah you do. Uh, we do. we you know we have me. such deep <laughs> emotional attachments to these these films and these characters, and it's our modern, you know, our modern mythology. This is what we're investing. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. Um. Well, this has been incredible. I want everybody to get a chance to to you know take this all in. Pick up the book if you haven't already. It's it's available everywhere. Um, I, I want to ask, uh, all of 30% you, off on that Amazon right now, 30% <laughs> off on Amazon. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Buy two. I, I actually do need a second. Co- our, our copy has been, it moves from room to room in the house and it's, you know, the <laughs> dust covers all jacked up already. So I need a, I need a nice pristine one so I can start getting it signed by everybody at, at mm-hmm. some point when, when we're ever allowed to be around people again. Um, <laughs> whenever that happens um so are you all working on current projects are you taking breaks i I know the the film industry is trying to ramp up uh or has continued to stay uh ramped that's a horrible (laughs) sentence but we'll go with it um are are you and if if you can't give away secrets that's fine but are you all actively uh engaged with with new projects uh yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. I, good. I, good. We'll I, I can't on. say anything about it. I'm I'm uh, about to start a project at HBO Max, uh, reimagining of one of the most beloved uh, uh, original characters from the DC universe, uh, Green Lantern, actually. So oh. hopefully we're oh, trying to get the scripts cool. together for that, and hopefully that'll go into production. Okay. At some that sounds point. amazing. That sounds yes. like something that we write up. Yes, our please. Album. Um, and, um, Bryn, I know, um, we actually work closely with the containment unit. So I know, uh, you're going to be doing some stuff. I, I already got my order in for my eight by 10. <laughs> Although I think this episode is going to be called a flat file full of munchers because we, we, need, <laughs> yes. we, we need to see what's in that flat file. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. There's munchers, <laughs> terror dog, uh, terror sentinels, all kinds oh, of stuff in there. That's so, what I want yeah. to see more of. Lots Dude. of original yeah. pencil work. Yeah. Oh. And, and someday we're all going to have a conversation about the sentinel terror dog. This is where we, we there's, there's, 
I don't listen. We'll keep we don't have all time night. right now. <laughs> oh, sorry. I must have for... just opened up, so I don't want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> listen, it, this is it's all part of being a fan. So, um, uh, and Ozzy, what what are you working on? Writing stuff and the same thing, you know, uh, non disclosure agreements and sure, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. th- these types of movies. But um, you know, it's great when occasionally you get. A, a really, really, you know, you get the combination of a good filmmaker and also who someone who's who's, um, you know, a fan not only of the source material, but also the craft. And right. like Francois was saying earlier, it's hard to find, you know, uh, filmmakers that that uh, kind of embrace both of those things uh, because of uh, because of technology the way it is. Sometimes you tend to forget that story uh, comes first and. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, again, to bring it back to Ghostbusters, that's one of the things, one of the elements was story, story, story. Everything that Bryn was talking about, everything that Francois was talking about, the farmhouse, Egon's backstory, what happened between those, those decades, um, right. what happened, who was Evo Shandor. So all of that is there to service the story. And yeah. you know, the props, the sets, they look cool, they're great, but they all come from that from that, from servicing the story and trying to trying to tell a good story with good characters. I think the uh, the scenery is surface and it's very important to do a good job with that. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I always go back to to uh, the mantra that I want the audience to feel something. I want them to feel something. We all want them to feel something. And how do you do that with making the this world that feels that 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 has a, that creates an emotional response in each right. scene and what's each scene about and how do i enhance that how do we enhance that with characters that have backstory and notes and history and and uh, a, a town of somerville that has a whole history uh that you can feel mm-hmm. uh all make sense and all it's of gotta that, have so. soul to make you cry right. there you yeah. go Oh, we yeah. thank you for doing that job. Yeah. All, and, all three and of us also, appreciate like, it. I mean, it goes without saying, but you know, then you have a cast that is just knocking it out of the park. Every like the this is like unbelievable. Like people, I don't think people know. People know, but they don't know how good McKenna Grace is in this. Yeah, world. she's just terrific. She's Absolutely. Awesome. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. not exaggerating when I say I think she should have been or should be considered for a best actress. <laughs> Uh, Oscar because or Academy Award or you know the, that's the same thing I just said um, <laughs> I'm not saying that just because I'm a Ghostbuster I think it should be nominated for everything mm-hmm. um, and by the way congrats uh, Francois for your nominations uh, in recognition this week uh, it, thank it, you it's got to be rewarding and, and exciting and it's it's so well earned and so deserved uh, it's just it's just so cool we're we're such fans well it's well it's uh, thank you so much for saying that I mean it's uh, yeah, I mean, it really means a lot to to if if it didn't work for the the real fans, it wouldn't have worked at all. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's a litmus test. Cool. Well, we will part ways for now. We will say goodbye. I'm sure we will catch up down the road. Everybody, go pick up the art of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I want to get the act- <laughs> the art and making of the movie. I keep we keep calling it the Ghostbusters art book, but it has an official title. So let's make sure people are finding the right thing. Don't buy the the knockoff copy that that I read. <laughs> well, originally it was just going to be the art of. I think originally they just were like, this is going to if it comes together really fast. And I was like, just the art of. There's so much to this movie, and you're only going to do one uh, when the movie comes out. So it might right, as well right. be like you know. Right. And, all inclusive. And, and because of Ozzy, it was like it's 25 pages longer than they wanted it to be. So that, <laughs> sure. oh, that's true. Oh, that, 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 that also yes. happened. <laughs> I wanted it to come with like digital downloadable content for me, <laughs> like with a CD ROM yeah, in the back or something. Folder. Remember that? That's great. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, we will sign off. Join us next week for more from Yes, Have Some Podcast. Thank Bye. you so much. Yeah, thank you again. It was an absolute pleasure.